In Miami, that is the Orange Bowl Queen and her court. The Queen, Ann Norman Witten of Carl Gables, her four princesses, Shelley K. Burrell, Elaine Mountain, Patricia Ann Sykes, and Mary Thixton saying Happy New Year to you all. And tonight, here in the Orange Bowl, it is the 50th anniversary of the Walt Disney Studios, and there, of course, is Mickey Mouse. And there is Mary Poppins. Can I say it? She's the lady that made famous supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. I did say it, didn't I? And at the Orange Bowl tonight, many festivities, and also including for the youngsters and the oldsters, Donald Duck. Talking about football, the fine tailback of LSU, Brad Davis, has since to break all the records of Billy Cannon, the Heisman Trophy winner from LSU. And speaking of Heisman Trophy winners, there he is, John Capaletti. He won it for the year 1973, playing for Penn State. And coaching these two teams on your left, Charlie McClendon of LSU, and on your right, Joe Paterno of Penn State. Both veterans in bowl appearances meeting each other tonight. These two men will face each other in the 1974 Orange Bowl. Brought to you by Pontiac. The wide track people have a way with small cars, too. By Texaco and the many thousands of independent Texaco retailers and distributors in all 50 states. By Goodyear, makers of the custom Steel Guard radial tire. And by Gillette, makers of new Track 2 twin injector blades for the best injector shave of your life. Orange Bowl, the temperature in the low 70s. We had a brief shower earlier, but the skies are clear. It is a beautiful night. It is a capacity crowd. And from Miami, Florida, hello and happy new year. I'm Jim Simpson, along with Kyle Roth. And Kyle... Penn State is undefeated. LSU, not expected to do much, won its first nine, but then fell before Alabama, and then almost inexplicably before Tulane. Well, LSU and Charlie McClendon, their coach, uh, have a great way of making upsets, and they're good at it and upsetting the favorite in a bowl game particularly. So I know although Penn State is heavier, their bigger team, their favorite, LSU doesn't believe it, I don't believe. Well, there's always pageantry here at the Orange Bowl, and we've got a great halftime show, but now let us go down for the pregame pageantry. Ladies and gentlemen, our invocation this evening is presented by Dr. William R. Bright, President, Campus Crusade for Christ International. Shall we pray? Our Father in heaven, millions of your children join with me tonight in praising and worshiping you on this, the first day of this new year. We thank you for the excitement and the drama of this great Orange Bowl experience and pray that you will bless and protect each participant. But we thank you with greater appreciation and gratitude that you sent your son, the Lord Jesus, who waits with outstretched hands to express his love and forgiveness to all men everywhere and to all nations. We pray that our nation will return to its Christian heritage and that you will turn suspicion and hate and discord to love and forgiveness and harmony. Send to our nation a new birth of faith and freedom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the Orange Bowl Committee proudly presents its 1974 pregame show entitled Blue Field of Freedom. We the people do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America.
White. Let the union be 13 white stars in a blue steel representing a new constellation, the first stars and stripes. that on the addition of every new state into the Union, one star be added to the Union of the Flag. gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, the Nittany Lions of Penn State University and their head coach, Joe Paterno. The Tigers of Louisiana State University and their head coach, Charlie McClendon. Tigers, 
Tigers always like to come out from under the goalposts. There's nothing quite like a bowl game, and there's nothing ever like an Orange Bowl. Charlie McClendon leading the LSU Tigers onto the field. Penn State already on the field. We'll be back for the start of the 1970 Orange Bowl game right after this pause from Miami. For LSU, Tyler LaFosse, 64. Bix Mishota, 91, the co-captains. Capoletti, O'Neill, Markovich, and Crowder, the four co-captains. For Penn State, LSU has won the toss and will receive to your left. The officials tonight are both from the Southeastern Conference, to which, of course, LSU belongs, and the Eastern Collegiate Athletic Conference, to which Penn State belongs. The officials are James Artley, the referee, umpire James J. Riley, George Morris is the line judge. The umpire is Earl J. Birdie. Field judge is Francis Keogh, Jr., back judge Gordon Pettis, and the clock operator is Pete Williams. Now, LSU, Won its first nine, lost its last two. That's Penn State. They've won 11 in a row. And I have reason to believe that when you make up the rankings, Penn State belongs at the top. They haven't had a losing season more than 35 years. Joe Paterno was down here four in five Orange Bowls ago, won a thriller with 12 men on the field against Kansas in the last seconds. Time had run out. And then defeated Missouri 10 to 3. Since he has been to other bowls. LSU, just three years ago, was here against Nebraska when Nebraska won the national championship on this field. John Reiner, number 86, will be the man to kick it off. For Penn State. Going deep for LSU is Bob Dow, standing at the goal line. Steve Rogers is on one side, Brad Davis nearest to you on the other. Well, Happy New Year. The 1974 Orange Bowl is underway. Dow at the four. To the 10. That speed breaks it outside to the 20. Down the sideline, across the 40, and run out of bounds. Run out of bounds by Bob Nagel. It'll be first and 10. Now a freshman from Jackson, Mississippi. And that's a, I think that's indicative of this LSU team. They've got great youth on it. As you mentioned, just a freshman. Robert Dow taken out of bounds by Mike Orsini. Mike Miley, number five, the quarterback. Durang, 38. Davis, 48, in the backfield. That's Grant Davis getting into Penn State territory down to the 46-yard line. Now, very quickly for LSU. Ben Jones, 37, the split end. Brad Boyd, 89, the tight end. Booty and Brooks, the tackles. Kane and LaFosse, the guards. Killen at center. Mike Miley, number five, the quarterback. Brad Davis, 48. Ryan Zerang, 38. And the split back is Richard Romaine, 26. It is second down and six from the 46. Now our eye left, first man through, is Durang. Gets across the 45-yard line, down to the 44, where Ed O'Neill and Tom Hull made the stop. The front four for Penn State, Dave Graff, 85, Randy Crowder, the All-American, 53, Mike Hartenstein, 79, Greg Murphy, 82. There are four linebackers, Chris Devlin, 66, Tom Hull, 49, Ed O'Neill, 87, Doug Allen, 68. The corners, Buddy Ellis, 18, Jim Bradley, 17, Scott Mitchell, 14, is the safety. Miley holds on to the football, gets down to the 40-yard line, and looks like he's got the first down. First down for LSU. Boyd leading the way. Miley was picked by the Cincinnati Reds back in 1971 as their number one draft choice. He's a shortstop. Instead, decided to go to college. And he's replaced the great Burke Jones as quarterback of LSU. No score. First two minutes of the game. Miley hands off to Brad Davis. Davis cuts inside, gets inside the 35 and down to the 32. Before Greg Murphy, number 82, makes the stop. Along with Doug Allen, number 68. Doug Allen actually graduated from Penn State two weeks ago. But he was playing during the regular season, so he could play in this game. 
You know, Jim, LSU does not use the pass very much. Over the season, they have only averaged about 13 passes per game. However, watching them in practice, Miley can throw the ball extremely well, although he doesn't do it often. Zarang fighting inside the 30. It looks like he's got a first down at the 29-yard line. Brian Zarang, Tom Hall, the left inside linebacker, number 49, made the stop. That's the first down. Again, Miley with that good action back there. Davis going in. Backed up. 79. Mark Hartenstein. Wide to the right. Miley hands off to Brad Davis. Look at that acceleration across the 15 yard line. Davis, a quick starter. He's the man that's going to break Billy Cannon's record with just any kind of year at all next season. By the way, Clay Kane is starting tonight at left guard over Russell Heald, who has a bad knee. And Kane helped open that hole. And Number 60. Pointed out on his way to breaking Billy Cannon's career record, Brad Davis. Hammond, Louisiana, averaging a little over five yards per carry every time he handles the ball. First down, there goes Davis again. Inside the 10, down to the seven-yard line. Scott Mitchell, the safety man, Ed O'Neill, the All-American linebacker, 87, made the stop. You know, Jim, if Brad Davis is this good, just think what we have in store for us tonight when Penn State gets their hands on the ball. John Capaletti. Brad Davis has two great runners in this one tonight. Davis has carried four times for 35 yards, yards already. By the way, both coaches said this would be a low-scoring game. And to Brad Davis again. Tracks inside the five, breaking tackles before Greg Murphy. The defensive right end, number 82, made the stop. Very close to the first down. Well, you know, Joe Paterno right there said that if it is a high-scoring game, he doesn't think his club can win it. He anticipates it to be a low-scoring ball game. Brad Davis comes out. Steve Rogers comes in. That's Davis's record. Rogers is a hurdler, and they say runs with a band. Leon Thompson has come in as a tight end, along with Boyd. So they've got two tight ends in there now. Miley hands Rogers touchdown easy. Well, that is you. The touchdown underdog took the opening kickoff and has rolled to the score. And they go right over the All-America, Tyler LaFosse, over right guard, right tackle Richard Brooks, the center Logan Killen, right behind the fullback, Brian Zarang, and nobody in his way. Number 22, Steve Rogers, in for the score. Great blocking on that interior line. Richard Brooks, the right tackle, Brad Boyd, tight end. Rusty Jackson with Bakier to hold. Attempt the extra point, which is perfect. Nine plays, 51 yards, took them three minutes and 39 seconds. And LSU leads seven to nothing. But now they've got to kick the ball to Penn State. Have you seen my sporty little Pontiac Ventura? Take a look at my brand new hatchback. Rocco will kick it. Number 28 in your picture there is Gary Heyman, who returned 193 yards against Maryland for a score. That is Blando, who has the football out across the 20, and Penn State will put the ball in play from about the 23. Tom Schumann, number 12, is the quarterback. John Capaletti, 22, is your tailback and Heisman Trophy winner. Bob Nagel, 41, at fullback. Chuck Hurd and Jimmy Scott will alternate at flanker back. They are the messengers. Gary Heyman is the split end, 28. Dan Natale, 89, the tight end. Laporta and Getty, the tackles. Markovich and Nestle, the guards. And Veronis is at center. In motion is Chuck Hurd. Ball goes to Nagel, the fullback, and he gets across the 25-yard line. There's the scoring drive. Vince Mishota, 91. Steve Cassidy, 70. Adam Dewey, who made the tackle, 77. Ron Daly, 93, the front four. They've had to juggle with their linebackers because Gary Champagne is injured. Bo Harris, 80. Warren Capone, 55. And Terry Hill, 41. We'll check that. Here comes Scott in motion. Ball is handed off to Capaletti. Gets out near the 30-yard line. Your cornerbacks, Mike Williams, 29, Dale Cangelosi, 39. And 
And your safety man, Rand Dennis, 25. And the other one is Frank Racine, 17. All right for Penn State. Third down and four to go. Our eye, that is her swinging out of motion. They give it to Capaletti, the Heisman Trophy winner, and he battles and does not get that first down. John Capaletti. Well, we were wondering, Kyle, about a Heisman Trophy winner playing here. Last year, we saw a Heisman Trophy winner, Johnny Rogers of Nebraska. He had a great night. Ran for three touchdowns, threw for another. Set yeah. a record. I think to expect Capaletti to uh, duplicate what Johnny Rogers did from Nebraska last season must be asking a little too much. Brian Masella will kick it away to Dow, who had the excellent kickoff return. Ball hits inside the 30, and then drifts inside the 25-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for LSU, which the first time it had the ball moved 59 yards for a score. 9.15 to go. We're in the first quarter of the Orange Bowl. 7 to nothing, LSU. And here's the life of the punter from Penn State, Brian Masella. Going down, good block. From the 24-yard line, first and 10 for LSU. Marquier is in and comes out wide to the right, number 18. Hodgins slipped back out there with him. Rogers, who scored the touchdown, gets up to the 25-yard line, and that is all. Stacked up there by Tom Hall, the inside left linebacker, number 49. These clubs offensively uh, look quite a bit like both setting up to the power eye, using motion. Defensively, uh, they're different. The Penn State defense using four front men, four linebackers, three deep backs. LSU using the standard 4-3. LSU will use four different tailbacks. Right now, it's Rogers, and he's got the football and not much yardage, does he? Across the 25, Ed O'Neill is down the bottom there, along with Mike Hartenstein. Penn State has had a record this year, especially in the late going, of having some troubles in the first half. As a matter of fact, Pittsburgh led them 13 to 3 at the end of the half, only to be buried by Penn State by the score of 35-13. So Penn State traditionally a slow starter. Third down and eight. Miley looking for his first pass. He throws and underthrows his intended receiver, and that of course is Brad Boyd his favorite receiver, the tight end. And so now LSU will have to kick the ball away. Rusty Jackson, who adds the extra points, comes on to kick it away. And again, that very dangerous Gary Heyman goes deep. Interesting how many times we saw Miley throw that pass in practice and how well he threw it. <laughs> it makes it a little different in the ball game. Jim AC 29, Gary Heyman 28. Jackson inside his own 15. <laughs> like there'll be no return here. Fair catch called for right there by Heyman, but they have good field position at the 38-yard line. Clock shows 8.01 to go. We're in the first quarter at the score LSU 7, Penn State nothing. Along with Kyle Rowe, Jim Simpson back in the Orange Bowl. That is the LSU bench looking out as Penn State takes over first and 10. Borderline now on at right defensive end for LSU, number 99. First man through, and that is Nagel the fullback, and he roars across the 50-yard line. First down, Penn State. Ram Dennis, throw him out of bounds. Nagel is a picture blocker, but a pretty good runner, too, Kyle. He really is, and he got the beautiful blocking up his front, sealing off uh, Capone a little bit, hitting him just enough to keep his break his stride so he couldn't get over in that play. 17 yard gain. First down after that 17 yard run on the 45 of LSU. Come on, Jordan! First man through again is Nagel. Well, could it be that they're figuring that the LSU defense is keying on Capaletti? They've gone to Nagel for 17 yards and now four yards here. It'll be second down and six. Steve Cassidy. And Adam Dewey made the stop. There's a story for you. Steve Cassidy was a starter as a freshman. He's a sophomore now. Adam Dewey is a freshman now and wasn't 18 years old until after the first 10 games of the season. He was playing major collegiate football at the age of 17. Scott swinging out in motion. 
Shum and hands to Capaletti. Capaletti gets a couple of tough yards down to perhaps the 38-yard line. Ford along, and Dewey made the stop. There's Dewey getting up. Just 18, 240 pounds. Dewey again, tackle. And we can take a look at John Capaletti, the Heisman Trophy winner, making that little outside head fake, getting in behind Bob Nagel, trying to get a block from him. Capaletti's carried three times for a total of six yards. Nagel three times for 25 yards. This is a third and three situation. We'd expect Capaletti, and he's got it, and he's in a crowd, and down he goes. Thanks, Mishoto. The very light left defensive end only weighs 202. And Thylan Smith, the sophomore linebacker starting because Gary Champagne is injured, made the stop. Brian Masella will have to punt the ball away again. Now goes deep. You saw what happened to Masella last time after he punted. That is now on your left, the deep man. Tries to kick it. So it will be inside the 10, and the fair catch is taken there, and Dow places it down on the 10-yard line. Well, the world's fastest team sport. National Hockey League, and the action returns to NBC Friday night and Sunday afternoon. That's this coming Friday and Sunday. 15 regular season games, beginning with Boston and New York on Friday, and then Minnesota against Detroit on Sunday, plus the Stanley Cup hockey playoffs. The National Hockey League on NBC starting this weekend. Remember NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sporting events all year round. Well, Dow put the ball down on the 10 and goes back to the 9. Brad Davis is back in there, is the tailback. And that's Davis with the football. And what a fine play by Greg Murphy, wasn't it? Number 82, the right defensive end. Gets the ball out to the 11, a gain of two. It is second down and eight. Miley moves his as well as I think uh, a quarterback we've seen in college this season, Jim. Really has good footwork. Watching he and Tom Schumann be interesting comparison tonight. Al Both very similar offenses. Thank you for uh, Al Coffey is in, number three. He's the fastest man on the squad, but wide right. Brad Davis breaks the tackle and gets out to about the 13-yard line. Mike Hartenstein and Tom Hull tripped him up. That'll be a big third down play there. 79, Mike Hartenstein, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the junior, 79. He's the one that slowed him up. Five oh five to go, third down and about eight. Miley hands to Brad Davis, and he does not get the first down. He's out across the 15-yard line. Randy Crowder, the All-American, number 53. They call him Sugar Bear. Made the stop. And so now LSU will have to kick it away. LSU took the opening drive, marched 59 yards. But Steve Rogers going over from three yards out. Rusty Jackson in the kick. Heyman, 28. AC, 29. Awaiting his punt. Jackson gets it away. Another fair catch call for by AC at the 49-yard line. And so now Penn State on the exchange of pucks does very well there at midfield. Program note for you, what happens to the Sanford and Son partnership when Red Fox learns that he isn't Devon Wilson's father after all? The search for the truth provides the comedy on this week's Sanford and Son. That's Friday at 8, 7 Central Time, right here on NBC. 7-0 LSU, 423 to go, first quarter. Don Chez is the fullback now, number 32. Penn State. Sanchez has the football and gets some tough yards. That looked like the ball put it loose for a moment, didn't it? Vince Mishota making an excellent defensive play, fighting off that initial block. Mishota, senior from Lafayette, Louisiana. We also might mention, Jim, that just prior to the ball game, we had a little thunder showers here and uh, it got the field quite wet, so we'll see a little slipping as we look on. Hi there, Pussycat. <laughs> the Nittany Lions and the Tigers of LSU. David Lee has come in at one end now. Stood him up there, didn't he? John Capaletti, they are really keying on him as he gets across the 45. Mike Williams led the charge. Another third down situation. Penn State has failed to negotiate a third down situation. Now Rock Rayford comes in. I'll tell you one thing, Kyle. Charlie McLennan has used Machado 
Rayford, Bordelon, Daly, Dewey, Cassidy, and Lee all in this defensive line. And a lot of his depth in that defensive line are sophomores. Again, good omen for next year. Third down and three. That is Hurd going in motion to the right. That is Donchez not getting the first down. Penn State likes to intimidate the defensive line with their big men, but they're not intimidating LSU thus far tonight. Cassidy and Thailand Smith made the stop. Oh, they're really not. Watch number 70, Steve Cassidy, sophomore from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He's the one in there. And as you pointed out, although they're outweighed considerably, 240 pounds to 224 is the difference in the average. Back to do the kicking is Marcella. That is Dow at the five. And in heavy traffic, and he's inside the 10. Now, first down LSU inside the 10-yard line. And look at the colorful Penn State. Tom Pong. Seven to nothing. LSU is 225 to go. We're in the first quarter. In the Cotton Bowl this afternoon, Nebraska 19, Texas 3. The Cornhuskers won their fifth consecutive bowl game. That is a record. Ohio State, after the Pacific 8 had been doing so much to the Big Ten, Ohio State rose up today and slapped down Southern Cal 42-21. Flag is down. They're coming back. It's against, I believe, LSU. It seemed to be that the Penn State team jumping up and down. Happy, not mad. That's a big one. Takes it inside the 30 down of the 29 yard line. Call it a personal foul. Charlie McLean. Well, he has been the Bulls eight times in 12 years. Joe Pacino has been the Bulls six times in eight years. They are quite something, aren't they? Jimmy Scott is the wide receiver and wide to the left. Heyman split out to the right. Donchez remains the fullback. Schumann, a good passer. Fires it low and dropped by Don Mazzelli. Schumann, according to Joe Paterno, is probably the best arm that they have ever had at Penn State as far as the picture passer is concerned. But he threw that ball too low. And it's second down and 10. And Natale. Couldn't hold on to the low toss. Hurd comes back in. Remember, Hurd and Scott are the messenger wide receivers. There's Capaletti, hands the ball to Hurd. Almost dragged down from behind and finally is pulled out of bounds. Pulled out of bounds by Vix Machoto, who has shown us something this evening. And another flag goes down. This time it is Penn State that has begun to walk back a little bit. Markovich, number 54, the good offensive guard over there, trying to find out what the referee James Artley is going to tell us. Uh, there's your holding. And then another penalty against LSU. Personal foul, so offsetting penalty. Second down and 10. Well, there's no doubt that LSU is fired up, Jim, as we point out, much, much outweighed in this offensive line of Penn State. 240 pounds, 224 for LSU. Heyman and Scott are both to the left, and that is Capaletti slipping and stood up. Steve Cassidy, Binks Machota. Uh, Cassidy has a little bit of weight to him at the left tackle spot, 228, but Mishota's slightly over 200 pounds. They'll say he makes up for his lack of weight with the aggressive, enthusiastic style of play. I guess the heaviest man uh, LSU can field in his, that interior defensive line would be Rock Rayford, 253. Adam Dewey started, 245. They're the two biggest men. Third down nine, Schumann rolling left. Schumann in trouble, fires the ball and off the hands of the indebted receiver, Jim Acey. Dave Cook was back there to the fence. Schumann trying to race to get out of the way of Terry Hill. Hill coming in from his linebacker spot. 
Well, you know he's got to do something tonight, Kyle, because he always does, John Capaletti, but he's carried the ball unofficially six times for a total of seven yards thus far. Now, Jerry Jerram is coming into hole, and Chris Barr, who was 11 for 19 in field goals, will try this one from the 34-yard line, a 44-yard attempt, which is good. From 44 yards out, Chris Barr hits and gets Penn State on the board. With 1.25 to go in the first quarter. Well, they said it was going to be a low-scoring game. You know, he, he has really had quite a successful season. He hasn't missed one under 35 yards this season. This one, as you point out, being 44, a little farther than normal. A junior from Peaceville, Pennsylvania. He's not too big, 5'10", 155. He is an All-American soccer player, Kyle, and has even missed a game of football in order to play soccer. He does not kick off. John Wiener does that and is about to now. Dow is deep with Davis and Rogers back with him. Dow had the good punt return, remember, up to the 41-yard line. Last time, this will be the Dow again at the five. The 10, the 20, up the middle and across the 25-yard line goes Robert Dow, where it's first and 10 for LSU. They lead 7 to 3. Joe Jackson doing some good coverage on that for Penn State. Really downfield in good shape. Billy Broussard has come in and will play quarterback. Mike Miley is not going to play. Broussard is a harder runner, does not throw as much, and Terry Robisky, the freshman, they say the finest athlete produced by the state of Louisiana in years, is in there and has the football, bounces off one tackle, slides down, loses on the play. Doug Allen, number 68 of Corning, New York, made the stop. Ken Addy has come in as the fullback, number 45. Robisky is 6'2", 198, out of Lucy, Louisiana, a freshman in high school, he scored a total of 90 touchdowns. Scored 62 himself, threw for 28. They say he makes things happen. Second down, 11. Broussard, the good runner, pitching back to Robisky. There he goes! First down for Terry Robisky. Across the 40-yard line. Chris Devlin, number 66, makes the stop. Well, as you said, Jim, he really does make things happen. Terry Obisky, freshman. Good size, too. 6'2", right at 200 pounds. Great speed. Got some good blocking in that interior line. We were watching Jimmy Ostelet, who is filling in for Clay Kane right now. Clay Kane came out. Ostelet in at the left guard spot. 25 seconds to go, first quarter. First down from the 44-yard line. Obisky may have lost the football. Penn State is saying it belongs to them. The LSU team is walking back saying it belongs to us. The LSU defensive team had already started on the field. Randy Crowder, who's the quickest defensive tackle that Penn State has, number 53, made the stop. Hey, you make a little judgment call for yourself as you watch. There goes the ball down to the lower left of the screen. Back in to number 16. It looked like Rubinsky recovered. Well, in any event, Kyle, we've reached the end of the first quarter. LSU scored on a drive of 59 yards. Penn State kicked a field goal. LSU 70. And Norman Witten is her name, the Orange Bowl queen. If you want her statistics, she's 19 years old. Statistics for the first quarter. First downs, LSU 5, Penn State 2. 76 yards rushing for LSU, 35 for Penn State. Nobody gained anything through the air. Broussard hands off to his tailback in there, and that is Robisky, and he gets very little. Ed O'Neill. There's a fellow that they say is going to be one of the great professional prospects in all of football. Ed O'Neill out of Warren, Pennsylvania, 6'3", 230, used to return punts and used to play defensive back, along with a fellow by the name of John Capaletti. Third down and 10 to go. Broussard going to carry it all away. Has some room out there and 
has the first down, I do believe. He bounced off a man and bounced past the 45-yard line. Broussard is the harder runner, 6'1", 192, and he has replaced Mike Miley. And he met Scott Mitchell, a safety man from Penn State, just head on, picked up a little additional yardage. Back just enough extra yardage to make the first down. Buddy Ellis, number 18, the left cornerback, has started every game since he became a varsity player three years ago. He played in the Cotton, Sugar, and now Orange Bowl in three successive years. Bisky in motion, whoops the fullback with the ball, Addy, and he is met and straightened up pretty good by Tom Hull, number 49. Second down at about nine. You know, even though uh, you have a four-man line and four linebackers, with these linebackers as quick as they are to fill those holes, it's, you're virtually facing what I guess would be tantamount to an eight-man line. If there's any weakness to it, I guess it would be in your pass offense. Uh, I would assume LSU will try to exploit that. Ben Jones, wide left, the split receiver on second and five. Sard hands to Robisky. Robisky gets down to the 40. Hartenstein made the stop there. Terry looked as though he was wondering whether or not to take it outside or cut back in. Decided to bring it back in. Third down at about six. And let's watch Ed O'Neill, the fellow we were talking about before. In 79, Mike Hartenstein right ahead of him. The two collaborating on a good tackle on Terry Rubisky. 7-3 LSU, early second quarter. Third down play. Start again, and there's Hull right with it. He doesn't get the first down this time. Down near the 36-yard line. They'll mark it at the 37. Oh, playing it beautifully. Dave Graff, the end, number 85, you'll see out there. He keeps him from going out to the outside. Now he's just waiting for 49 Hull to fill in to the inside. Graff playing that wide position, looking for the toss. Hull filling from the inside as he should. Juan Roca, a soccer star born in Honduras in Central America, will try a 54-yard field goal. It is blocked. The ball is still loose, still loose, and covered by Greg Murphy of Penn State on the 35-yard line. The Nifty Lions take over. Graff blocked it. Murphy got it. Dave Graff making that block. Again, pointed out there, you can see him again. Number 85, the junior from Dunkirk, New York. Murphy recovering. Murphy, number 82, from Brooklyn, New York. Heard wide to the right. John Capaletti does not have it. Schumann does. Throws deep for Heard in the end zone. He's out of bounds. Out of the end zone. Dave Cook was defending, but Heard had him beaten. Now, we'll hopefully have a chance maybe to see that. I don't know again, but that was really, I thought, just an excellent call. Schumann 0 for 3. Passing department. We said, Joe Paterno says, he has the best arm in Penn State history. Jimmy Scott now comes in. You can see him whisper something to him. Jimmy's from Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Our fellow by the name of James Thorpe went to school. Second down. That is Scott in motion. Schumann and the Capilotti bounce off one tackler. His finest one of the day. The Heisman Trophy winner gets inside the 30-yard line. Down to about the 27. It'll be third and short yardage. And we had a flag, and it looked like they caught him holding right as Capiletti got through the hole. The, the man who did the holding, I don't think, really had to because at the point the flag was thrown anyway, he had already cleared the line of scrimmage. And it is a penalty against Penn State. Well, both three to go. The Penn State has been so successful. John Cavaletti just carried the ball, was a defensive back. Watch his play here first. There's that step. After possession, he has to have one foot inbound. There's the possession. 
there's the foot out of bounds. Excellent call. Second down, Schumann with the football, pop once, loops one down the sideline. Angelosi was defending against Payment over there, and it's incomplete. Started to say about John Capaletti. As a sophomore, he was a substitute defensive back and spent most of his time in the Cotton Bowl that year sitting on the bench. Then last year, when Penn State went on to play Oklahoma in the Sugar Bowl, on the day of the game, Capaletti came down with the flu. This year, he has won the Heisman Trophy, and he's starting. Scott comes wide right. This is third down a long yard. It's about 27 of the 48 of Penn State. Everybody looking for Schumann to throw. Goes over the middle, has Heyman. He's got great speed and slips as he hits the 40-yard line, and that is about 15 or 16 yards shy of the amount of territory needed for the first down. We take a look at Heyman in number 28, sitting off on the slot, a little delay across the middle. Here comes the pass. As we pointed out, it had rained here just prior to the ball game. He tries to make this cut, tries to make it a little too sharply. Brian Masella is coming again. Watertown, New Jersey, standing there. Dow, who has been very exciting tonight, is on the right-hand side of your picture. 7-3, LSU, second quarter. Dow's calling for the fair catch at the nine-yard line. Well, after blocking Roca's attempt for the field goal, LSU got out of it. Penn State couldn't score it. Seven to three LSU and we'll come right back to Miami. Freedom. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Miley is back in there at quarterback. Brad Davis at tailback. Davis with the football getting out across the 10-yard line and not much more than that. Looked like Greg Murphy. Number 82 is down the bottom there, along with Tom Hall, number 49. Hall has played quite a game tonight. He will go into that line, making it a five-man line, or drop off. Joe Paterno's feeling is he's got a front four, four linebackers, but he gives an awful lot of responsibility on the pass coverage to those four linebackers. Second down and about eight. Davis has carried nine times for 48 yards. Miley hands again to Davis. He's got some speed and gets out to about the 14-yard line. But it'll be third down and four. Tackle was made there by Jim Bradley and Tom Hall. Jim Bradley, talk about the distractions of Miami. They're great ones. Bradley has been in water safety and was kind of showing how to do the dives up at the hotel pool the other day. Cut open his head. Couldn't wear a helmet in practice. Had to have stitches, about eight of them. But he's playing tonight from Johnstown, Pennsylvania, number 17. Third down and four to go in a 7-3 ball game, LSU leads. Miley still with the football and slips. Kyle, they have said an awful lot throughout the professional games of this year of how slippery this turf is. Add the little water that you talked about from the little shower, and a lot of people are slipping. Well, they really are, and uh, it's unfortunate because I'm sure it'll handicap both Davis and Capaletti. Davis, however, seeming to have a pretty good feel for this type of turf. Rusty Jackson will kick it away to AC and Heyman again. Heyman is 28, AC is 29. Jackson has lots of time and gets one away. Backs up. Heyman inside the 30-yard line where he slips. But he's got that speed. He's got a wall down the sideline. Flag goes down. They're saying, hold it. Come on back. Come on back. Apparently, Fakir, when he touched it, his knee did hit the ground. And so instead of the long punt return, that's a big break for LSU and a bump break for Penn State. A 56-yard punt. And you know what? He gets no return. We just finished talking about the turf, the conditions under which they're playing. 9.02 to go. LSU is out in front. They scored with their opening drive and lead 7-3. Joe Paterno has only won about 85% of all of his games. Here's where he slips to his knee, Kyle, and you just can't do that. So we'll show that in a moment. From the 26-yard line, Schumann ends to Capaletti. And he is again held a short yardage. Now we'll take a look at uh, how Heyman went down to one knee. 
And here's a look at the play. And of course, in the college rules, the moment uh, a knee touches down or is considered down, an official standing right there. Let's see. Uh, I tell you, <laughs> he did a pretty good job of keeping those knees off the ground. <laughs> well, that's one for them. <laughs> Second and nine. Newman taking the handoff back to throw deep for Hurd, and look at the catch! Touchdown! Uh, Jim, if it was meant to be, it was meant to be anyway, and here it goes to the senior from Far Rockaway, New York. Chuck Hurd, a great one-hand grab. Number 39, Dale Angelosi following him. 72 yards, one-handed catch. Just a great thrill for this senior. Jerem is in the hold. Barr, the All-American soccer player, puts it away easily. And with eight minutes and 19 seconds to go, hey, what a game. Pepsi now he tells you 10 to 7. If you were th You're right, man. This is a game of tension. In the warm Orange Bowl in Miami. Rainer will kick it off. Dow's the deep man again. Dow will take it at the four. Over the 10. He's got speed. And gets out across the 20-yard line to about the 24-yard line. And there's another flag now. Bobo made the stop. Let's see what the flag is. And they're talking to Penn State. Remember, the officials are evenly divided from the Southeastern Conference and the Eastern Collegiate Athletic Conference. Half the distance to the goal is what James Arthur of Savannah, Georgia is marking off. For Clifford. And the seventh, Mike Miley, the junior quarterback from Metairie goes in. Brad Davis is his tailback. LSU took the opening kickoff and marks 59 yards for a score. Daddy is the fullback in front of Davis. Davis, hold there for a moment. Got out near the 14-yard line, and that's all before Hartenstein and Ed O'Neill made the tackle. Well, all of us at NBC Sports wish you a very happy new year and would like to remind you that our vice president in charge of NBC Sports, Carl Lindemann, is watching for this from the hospital because he had his knee operated on. Like all good sports, he had cartilage problems with his knee. Are we missing? Are we all send you our best. Davis gets out near the 15-yard line, and that is about all. You know, Jim, I know Charlie McClendon does not like to vary from his normal style of play in which it really the run dominates the game. You'll have to pass a little, I think, uh, more than he is. He's got uh, some awfully good receivers out there, Ben Jones, Brad Boyd, Norm Hodges, Richard Romain. There has been one pass only. Miley over the season hit on 56% of his passes. Miley with the football, flips it back, and oh, they're waiting for it. Woo! Down goes Brad Davis. Chris Devlin, the outside left linebacker, Number 66 was just standing there. Murphy came over to help him out. Maybe he heard me. That was a tight pass. I had <laughs> Six forty to go. We're in the first half. Penn State leads it ten to seven. At halftime, the LSU Golden Band of Tiger Lamb, the Penn State Band, and the salute to Walt Disney. And that's something you're going to enjoy with all the Walt Disney characters. Rusty Jackson is back, and Penn State looks like they're going to put the rush on, don't they? Jackson gets another beauty. Driving Heyman back inside his own 40-yard line to the 39. He's back up to the 50. He's got a wall. He is dragged down inside the 30 down to the 26-yard line by Rusty Jackson, the putter. Gary Heyman makes things happen. A punt of 49 yards, but Heyman returned it 36 yards. Saturday, the 12th of this month at 1 o'clock Eastern time, the 25th anniversary game of the North-South Senior Bowl. Ed O'Neill, John Cavaletti will be there, Lynn Swan of USC, many stars you've seen today. 
35 players of last year's game have made it to the National Football League. 235 have played in the Senior Bowl have made it to the league. In on NBC. Schumann looking for another one. Goes and it's almost intercepted out there. Intended for Jimmy Scott. And Mike Williams, the big play man on defense for LSU, really put a shot on Scott, is just now getting up. Talking about Mike Williams being the big play man. There he is, number 29, junior from Covington, Louisiana. Three interceptions this season, two fumble recoveries, 42 solo tackles, and numerous deflections. Steve Whitfield has come in as a defensive end, number 56 for LSU. Cuban fakes to Capaletti, throws to Heyman, it's one on one, and he gets by the one, Cangelosi, and it's knocked out of bounds. Well, they like to get Heyman out there, they like they used to like to get Kyle Road out there, one on one, give him the old tearaway shoes for the team. Yeah, the two yard pass. <laughs> now, Gary Heyman is. Uh, so valuable. He does so many things well. LSU deploys as Jimmy Scott has brought in the play from Joe Paterno. The ball is at the 22-yard line and it's third down and six to go. Scott goes wide to the left. Heyman comes to the right. Nagel slots himself to the right and a double wing. Capaletti's the only man back there. There goes Nagel in motion. Quick pitch to Capaletti. Block is in front of him. Get by Dewey. Down he goes and looks like he's got the first down. John Cavaletti, the Heisman Trophy winner. Dewey, the big right tackle, trailed over there and just couldn't get to him. That's the first down for Penn State. They lead 10-7, 5.43 to go. First half. Dan Natale, Bob Nagel, both doing some good blocking on the play. But Gary Champagne hurt. Nyland Smith, Bo Harris, Warren Capone, Steve Lalikix, Terry Hill have all played. First down from the 15. That's the up man, and that is Nagel, the fullback, getting down to about the 13-yard line. And that is all. Now there is Stylin Smith, number 49. Binks Mashota, who has done a great job this evening, number 91. They combine. Gary Champagne has a great bad bruise to his thigh and cannot play. Second down from the 13. Heyman goes wide left. Power eye left. Scott in motion. Gilman hands to Capaletti, and Capaletti gets down to about the 10. Well, we've got another third down play coming up. Joe Paterno talking about Capaletti says he's just about the best player he has ever been around. The speed, the power, the combination of all of these great qualities of a great running back. He's talking about John Capaletti, number 22, winding up his collegiate career for Penn State, going to some postseason bowl games. Gary Champagne is out, but so is Bo Harris, momentarily at least, with a bad knee. He's on the sidelines. Third down and nearly five. Human. He'll make the pitch to Capaletti, and I don't believe he got it. He's awfully close. Might have it. For the first down. Jim, I believe he made it. Well, he's saying he did. Angelosi made the stop. That's the first down and goal to go. Penn State favored by a touchdown, leading by three, with 3.51 to go. In the first half. And that linebacker core of LSU has been decimated. But Harris and Champagne both out. Now Schumann foul up there, so he's going to call timeout. He's talking to Nagel. Nagel doesn't understand. Remember, a messenger wide receiver brings them in. So while they go over there to talk, we'll leave here for some more talk. Listen to this. Kyle Road, Jim Simpson here in the Orange Bowl. That's the amount of time we got left in the first half. 3.38. Penn State has the ball first down and goal to go at the five-yard line of LSU. And they lead 10 to 7. Don Capaletti averaging less than two yards per carry. Eight 
man punt for LSU. There goes the fullback, and that's Nagel, of course, and he gets maybe a yard. Back up in the middle there. See Violin Smith getting up. See Binks Mashota getting up. Steve Cassidy making the stop. Like most of the great backs that we've had the pleasure of watching, Jim, uh, you can contain them for a while. They always seem to be able to get away eventually before the game's over with, with a critical good run. Hurd who caught the 73-yard touchdown pass gets wide to the right. Second down, Capilani going the other way. Look out, and boy, what a saving tackle, wasn't it? came over to close it to Dylan Smith, just as it looked as though Capaletti was going to go in. Watch this flow of the play, a little counter step, then back to the left. Following 61, John Nessel. Good block by Nessel. There comes Rock Rayford, Dylan Smith. Now we go back to live action. Third down from a yard out. Capaletti, touchdown! Just good, strong power right in behind his fullback, Bob Nagel. Steve Cassidy right over him, just getting his shoulder. And from another angle, we watch again. Nagel leads through, good block on Cassidy. Enabling. Capaletti to momentum to just carry him over. Chris Barr comes on with Jerem the hole. Barr kicks. And Barr's kick is no good. It hit the left uh, standard of hit the left standard of the goalpost. Well, you've just got to also pay tribute to a fellow by the name of Gary Heyman, who's made things happen today and really set up that touchdown drive. The drive was only 26 yards. Well, a weekend of January 19th and 20th will be out in wonderful Tucson, Arizona, for the Dean Martin Tucson Open. And on Saturday, the 19th, we'll have round three. That'll start at 5.30 Eastern time. On Sunday, we'll have the Pro Bowl between the AFC and NFC from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City at 2 Eastern time, followed by the final round of the Dean Martin Open. Brought to you by NBC Sports, number one in live coverage of major sports events all year round. John Reiner of Washington, Pennsylvania will kick it off. Dow is not going to bring it out. He fumbled the ball, and so it'll be first and ten at the 20. 218 to go, and we'll be interested to see Kyle Roach whether or not Charlie Mack, as they call him so fondly in the Southeast, Charlie McClendon, will tell Mike Miley to put the ball up. Well, you know, uh, based on their first drive early in the ball game, in which they looked so good against Penn State, nine plays, 55 yards, culminated by Steve Rogers' three-yard run for the score. Didn't look like they were going to have to put the ball up in the air at all. Now I think things have changed just a little bit. Rogers is in there as a tailback now and gets across the 20 to the 22. Rogers, as we said, is a hurdler, and they describe him as a wild runner, a runner of Reckless abandon. Robisky has been used sparingly. He had one 17 yard run. Brad Davis is leading everybody, and we haven't seen Laura hinted yet. Miley has thrown only one time. Failed to hit Brad Boyd, his tight end. Rogers. Flag goes down on this thing. Hold it, hold it. Legal procedure charged against LSU. Doug Booty apparently moved. And the preliminary signals. So that'll be five yards, taking it back to the 15. Legal procedure of motion. Looked like Booty, the left tackle, was moving. We've got 143 to go before the Penn State band, the LSU band, and that salute to the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney with all your favorite Walt Disney characters. Ben Jones is way wide to the left, out of your picture. Second down at 14, and that's the tailback. Rogers not going anywhere. Crowder again, watch him. You'll see him getting up. Number 53, you'll see him walking back in your picture. He's the man that submarined the play. Crowder is not that big, 
Even though he's big enough for me, 6'3", 235, but he relies on quickness. Had a knee operation in the offseason and yet has come back to play a very aggressive defensive tackle. For most of the night, he's lined up with a good head-on match with Tyler LaFosse, a right guard for LSU. LaFosse, they're just about the same weight. LaFosse a little shorter as we watch on the LSU sideline. 1.30 to go. We are in the first half. LSU scored first since then, have given up 16 points to powerful Penn State, which is 11-0 on the season. Joe Paterno, in his career, has been something else again. 173, lost 13, tied one. In the bowls, this is his fifth. He has won three, lost one, tied one. Third down and long yardage, and Miley looks like he's going to put it up, but decides not to put it up, and he's not going to get the first down. They caught him on a clip, Jim. Either Steve Rogers or Richard Romaine came back in, and they caught him on a clip, trying to get back in to help out in the blocking pattern. Well, they may well refuse this because it'll be fourth down. We'll see what happens. Randy Crowder stepping in. Ed O'Neill, number 87, talking there, looking over to the bench. Already the special team is coming onto the field. So the clip is refused, so they can kick the ball away. So Rusty Jackson comes in. Donna McLennan says Mike Miley knows what he has to do, never loses his poise. Well, Mike and the LSU team are going to have to maintain their poise throughout the next half because they're down by nine points, and Penn State is beginning to exert the pressure and the power. Heyman, who set up the last touchdown with a great return, is back to take this kick. Rusty Jackson. Wow, did he get another one away? Flag goes down. They have roughed the kicker. Heyman with the ball inside the 20-yard line. Back to the 25, and he goes down. I believe that Rusty Jackson really took a shot, and that's going to give the ball back to LSU. Let's wait and see. Wild and company coming back on. There's the penalty, James Hardly telling us that it is roughing the kicker. You can watch. Rusty Jackson as he gets this uh, draws this penalty. I just say oh. number 96, Brad Benson, for Penn State, inflicting the wound. <laughs> 60. I'm laughing, but I'm up here. 16 to 7, the score. Penn State. Ball is on the 41-yard line. LSU can still put something together here, but they'll have to break the big one. They've been playing very conservatively. Brad Davis in motion. They like to throw to the tight end out of this. They throw instead to Davis. Davis gets out to midfield, and if he flies, he'll try to get out of bounds, which he does. He stops the clock. Out near the 47-yard line. Buddy Ellis ran him out of bounds in front of the Penn State bench. As he sprints out on that, Miley, looking for Rich Romaine, who comes in from the right side. That linebacker stays back in there. Then he'll just toss it on out to Davis. Leaves him wide open. Ben Davis wide to the left. Second down, short yardage. Miley back to throw again. Going long downfield and overthrows his man, Richard Romain. Back there with him was Buddy Ellis. Romain, 26. Ellis, 18. And that's Mike Miley, number five. And it was good he overthrew that one because Ellis really had excellent coverage on Romain. Third down, a little bit more than three. LSU took Colorado, the Texas Aggies, Rice, Florida, Auburn, Kentucky, South Carolina, blew Mississippi right out of there, took Mississippi State, fell before Alabama, and then for the first time in 25 years, Tulane knocked them off. They come here with a two-game losing streak. Miley gets it out this side to Brad Davis, and he is knocked down by Jim Bradley. But he's got a first down. And that was a tough catch for Davis, too, because he could see Bradley coming up on his right. Knowing he had to grab that ball and maintain the discipline that's required when you see a man coming up like that. You don't know whether he's going to take your head off or not while you're trying to catch it. Now the similarity between Davis and Billy Cannon, the former Heisman Trophy winner, the former record holder for LSU, and that is that 
Billy Cannon went on to become Dr. Billy Cannon, a dentist, and we understand that Brad Davis would like to do the same thing. 41 seconds left in the half. Maybe you can uh, sense the feeling of a Brad Davis or any receiver trying to catch this pass. Coming in from the left of your picture will be Jim Bradley. You can see him right out of the corner of his eye. Just getting away from taking a straight on head on shot. Bradley pretty good size fella too Jim 6'2 190. Excellent speed. Miley getting the word along the sidelines there Brad Davis. I believe Kyle told you this had a hundred nine hundred and four yards which is an all time record for LSU in a single season. And he only needs 404 yards next year to break Billy Cannon's all time rushing record at LSU. All right, the ball's on the 48 of Penn State. First down, 41 seconds to go. LSU trails 16 to 7 and sending two wide receivers wide to the right and Brad Davis flanking out that way. Miley rolling that way. Cutting back up the middle. Miley's a good runner. He better try to get outside if he can and does go out inside the 30. There's the scramble by Mike Miley. Scott Mitchell knocked him out of bounds. Along with Jim Bradley. Oh, there's some great blocking along the way. Watch Miley again as he goes out to the right. Cuts back up inside. Good block by Brad Davis right here on Ed O'Neill 87. Right there on the right of your picture. Number 17, Jim Bradley taking him out of bounds. 31 seconds left in the half from the 29. LSU moving the football. Davis in motion. Miley looking and throwing complete to Ben Jones inside the 20. They call for time. With 24 seconds to go. And you know, Jim, you just wonder why Charlie McClendon wants to waste as long to put what seems to be such an effective passing game into action. Time out call. Miley coming to the sidelines. Well, oh, Ben Jones has caught the ball. Number 37 is the younger brother of Burt Jones, who is a quarterback from uh, the Baltimore Colts. But we'll watch Miley and we'll continue the story in a minute. Mike Miley on the little uh, sprint out option, turning out, hitting Jones. Jones with 11 receptions this season. Actually, he's the third leading receiver. Brad Boyd is Miley's favorite receiver. He had latched on to 16 this season. Norm Hodgins with 12, so Jones would rank third. A junior, right out of Louisiana. It's hard to say, Kyle. He understudied his brother's quarterback over in Ruston in high school, and when his brother graduated went on to LSU, he still didn't make first string. Someone else did, so he finally decided, hey, I'll be a wide receiver, and he is a walk-off. Not a scholarship man. First down inside the 20, 24 seconds to go. Davis in motion. Miley. Miley going to Davis, who's over there. Inside the 10. And they will call time again. Buck is running. There they've called time, but a good four or five seconds went off the clock before they called time. Now they're going to see, with second down, whether or not they can chance to throw Kyle into the end zone and still give time enough for Rusty Jackson to add at least three points to make it 16 to 10. Well, it would seem that they would have time for at least one play, unless he gets trapped back there and starts running around and what? winding down that clock too much. Funny how this game has gone. LSU took the opening kickoff and just moved Penn State right out of there. Moved for 59 yards. Since that time, it's been all Penn State until they went out in front, 16 to 7. And with the help of a roughing the punter play, Miley and company have come back and now they are likely to get on the board again. Second down at about two yards from the nine yard line. 11 seconds to go in the half. But a great halftime show coming up, but I'm interested in what's going to come up in these next 11 seconds. Brad Davis, 48. Miley, talking to his men, number five, speaks to Tyler LaFosse, his All American right guard. Davis slots out to the left. Miley, got receivers to the left. Rose has got Brad Davis inside the five. And time is called quickly with two seconds to go. They line up. They got to put the ball back in play. It's down at the five. They started to line up back at the ten. 
I don't know if they can get a playoff. Very quickly, they go one, two, they better take it, it'll go. He throws! Stops the clock, it shows nothing left. Aimed it for Ben Jones. And so the half is ended, and LSU has lost the opportunity. They had the ball at the five-yard line, and time ran out, which tells us that in the second half, we're going to see quite a ball game. We're going to see quite a ball where we've just witnessed a fabulous halftime and a fabulous first half. They're looking now at LSU and Penn State warming up. LSU trailed 16 to 7. Kyle, the first time LSU had the ball, they drove 59 yards for a score, but thereafter it was Penn State. As Barr got a 44 yard field goal, then there was a fabulous 72 yard pass play to Chuck Hurd to make it 10 to 7. Capaletti later scored after that was set up by a Heyman punt return to make it 16 to 7. But then at the end of the half, LSU marched all the way down and had a first down at the five yard line when time ran out. Now we're going to have a pause here because of the halftime ceremonies. It looks as though there's some, some kind of material in the middle of the field. And so Joe Paterno is going to come out and figure out whether or not it would be harmful to the players or not. Apparently, uh, He's agreed that it won't be. Otherwise, I think you would have made uh, some comment to the official to try and have it uh, removed from the field. Some type of tinsel. <laughs> <laughs> After that halftime, I'd better not call for Mickey Mouse play. The words of Joe Paterno uh, uh, with a little poetic license. I tell you, the uh, Penn State team leading at halftime 16-7, but what a job Ernie Tyler did on that halftime. That's, that's just fantastic. Oh, love it. He won the halftime. <laughs> The four co-captains of Penn State out there with Machoto of LSU began to show us that it will be Penn State that will receive the second half kickoff. LSU still working without their linebackers, Gary Champagne, who didn't even suit up, and then Bo Harris hurt his left knee, and he will not play anymore tonight. So LSU's got a defensive problem, and they've got an offensive problem, too. They've got to be able to score. Well, they've uh, at least uh, started to throw the ball around a little more. Mike Miley ended up that first half Attempting eight passes, completing five. You see Tom Schumann on the other side for Penn State, attempted eight, completing three. 170 yards total for LSU to 146 for Penn State. First downs, LSU 11, Penn State five. Uh, apparently part of that, the first drive in the ball game that Jim referred to when they got their only touchdown and then right toward the end of that first half after the penalty enabled them to keep possession of the ball and they kicked in the, when they were kicking and drove down, but time ran out. Juan Roca will kick it off to Gary Heyman, 28, Dave Bland, 44. 16 to 7, Penn State, as we begin the second half of the 1974 Orange Bowl. Wow, Roca really put his foot in that. That's Bland deep in the end zone, dropping it so he won't bring it out. We'll come out to the 20, first and 10 from there. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. Tom Schumann's the quarterback, number 12, Bob Nagel, 41, John Cavaletti, 22, the running backs, Chuck Hurd, 25, Jimmy Scott, 19, will alternate as the messengers. Gary Heyman, 28, the split end, Dan Natale, the tight end, 89, Laporta and Getty, the tackles, Mark Levitch and Nestle, the guards, and Lorano Sinsenna. That's Nagel in motion. Cavaletti and running into deep trouble again. That LSU front four has done a job. I think you can see that Borderline is one of the defensive ends in there now, number 99. Adam Dewey, 77. Steve Cassidy, 70. Biggs was shown at 91. The other members of the front four. Looked like that was uh, Adam Dewey, the freshman, number 77. In the white, there he is, coming in from that uh, off tackle position. Can you imagine he was not 18 until after the 10th game of this season? Second down at about nine. Schumann hands the ball to Capaletti, and he doesn't get much, does he? Again, Bordelon, number 99, sophomore from New Orleans, made the stop. Well, with Champagne and Harris out, Tylen Smith, Warren Capone, the All-American, and Terry Hiller, your linebackers. Mike Hill, 29, Dale Cangelosi, 39. Your backs on the corners, Dennis Rand, 25, Frank Racine, 17. We see that Cook is in there. Third down. 
and seven. Nagel in motion. Schumann pitches to Capaletti, and down he goes. What a fine play made by number 70, Steve Cassidy. He barreled in underneath everybody and cut down Capaletti, and LSU starts off strong. He really did. Bob Nagel had a good block on his man. Cassidy just firing in, knifing in from behind. Might point out in that first half, Capaletti carried the ball 11 times for a total of 21 yards. Rough first half for him. Brian Masello will kick it away. Down is deep. Whoops, the ball gets away from him. He falls down in the end zone. That's going to be a safety two points from the left to kick it away. Ball got away on a bad snap. Masello fell into the end zone with it. It's a safety. It's 16 to 9. LSU is down within a touchdown, and Penn State has to give up the football to LSU. We'll watch Brian Masella again, doing all he could really to stop the ball from continuing on back into that end zone. However, not quite enough, and there you see him slipping on that turf. And at that point, electing to stay there for the two points. And do anything about it, Mark Markovich, usually very reliable as a snapper, or punts and extra points and field goals. The guard that moves the center to snap. Hit that high over the head of Masella, and there was nothing he could do. He simply slipped, as we've seen so many people slip. But now, Marcella will punt it away, and this time he gets a free kick. Now is back there. An excellent chance for LSU. Well, they're back in the ballgame. They're only down by a touchdown. Seven points. And I know what Paterno is thinking. You just don't give away cheap points in a ball game like this, because Oh, two points makes up for the, I guess, the one that the uh, field goal had missed an opportunity in a while back. Kicks the ball away, a driving kick, which means a down. If he can pick it up, that's picked up by Rogers. Rogers has got good speed, and he gets down to the 36-yard line. Now again slipped as he tried to pick up the ball. Jackson made the stop. Watch him coming into that pile, almost on a slow, off-speed type of play like that, where there's a mix-up. You break a pretty long run, but he's really got waffled. Brad Davis, the tailback, 28, Miley. Meyer, as the quarterback, he's got the ball. Hey, he runs that option well, doesn't he? Picks up nine yards out to the 45-yard line. He is very quick. Remember, he plays shortstop. Cincinnati Reds, we told you, thought enough of him to make him their number one pick, but he decided to play quarterback instead. Let's set the rest of them for you. Miley, five. Brad Davis, 48. Zerang, 38. The wide receivers, Hodgins, 30. Ben Jones, 37. Brad Boyd, 89, the tight end. Booty and Brooks, the tackles. Kane and Lebowski, the guards. And Killen at center. Second down and a half a yard. Now, Fakier is in there, and he comes out as a wide receiver at the bottom of the screen. Miley hands to Brad Davis. He's got the first down, and he is into Penn State territory. Down to the 47-yard line. Mike Hartenstein tripped him up, and Murphy put him down. Richard Brooks led the way with a fine block, Kyle. And with that initial movement toward his left, Miley really got Penn State flowing in that direction. Davis cutting back against the grain. Mike Hartenstein, 79, getting a piece of him, slowing him down, holding on to that angle. First down, Rockier and Jones both wide to the left. Miley makes the handoff, pitches out to Brad Davis. Lost the football, Penn State jumps on it. Looks like Doug Allen, number 68, jumps on it at the 45-yard line. And Penn State gets a little light. LSU had him on the ropes in the first couple of minutes of this half. And I think Dave Graff surprised Miley a little bit there. He had been dropping out for that, uh, waiting for that last pitch out. Came back, 68, actually, Doug Allen, forcing him to make that last little toss. That's Brad Boyd being offered it on over there for some specific problems, apparently. Shoot hands, makes the handoff, still has it, goes over the middle, out of the hands, and intercepted! Out of the hands of Heyman! Intercepted by the man they say makes it go! And that is Mike Williams, number 29. And LSU gets the football right back. It starts off with a good block by Capaletti picking up the shooting linebacker, Thylan Smith, in the ball off the hands of Heyman. 29, Mike Williams 
Uh, Jim point out the man who makes the big play historically for LSU. Take another look at it. Bouncing right off. Now we're back to live action. Power eye to the right. Hodgins setting up now on the left side. Miley keeps the football and slips down after picking up perhaps four yards up to the 44-yard line. Randy Crowder, number 53. Two turnovers for LSU, one for Penn State. 16 to 9 the score. The Nittany Lions, 11 and a half minutes to go. We're in the third quarter. And the Cotton Bowl today, Nebraska 19, Texas 3. And the Rose Bowl, which you saw on NBC, Ohio State 42, USC 21. Miley fakes the handoff, pitches back, and he was being bothered, and now Miley goes back to recover. They had picked up the tailback, Brad Davis. Doug Allen had, and Miley simply pitched it right into the pack. Chris Devlin made a great play on that. The linebacker, weak side linebacker, coming in there and actually just hitting Davis. Third down and 17. Al Coffey, the speedster, he holds the records over at LSU, played in this Orange Bowl four years ago. In there, Miley back, look out, down he goes. There's that man again, Sugar Bear, Randy Crowder, the All-American, number 53. And LSU now begins to march backwards, so Rusty Jackson will come on to kick the ball away. Crowder really coming through the super season this year, coming off of knee surgery in the offseason. Heyman and Bland are back. Again, make that Heyman an AC. 28 and 29. Fair catch called for, and then the ball bounces back toward midfield, and so it has to be down there by Ostelin, the reserve center. So time is out. Penn State's got the ball at their own 49 yard line. They lead 60 to 9 here in the third quarter. LSU assistant coach diagramming some plays, trying to get them together, but now LSU is on defense. First and 10 from Penn State. Schumann fakes the handoff, pitches out to Capoletti, blocker in front of him. Williams is over there and makes the stop after five or six yards. That blocker out in front of him was Mark Markovich, and Capoletti really wanting to slow up a little bit, let him get out in front and cut back behind him, but he really couldn't afford to because of the pursuit of LSU. They were in too close to him. He really just couldn't cut back. Well, this year marks the first time that this Orange Bowl is being seen in Anchorage. You know in Fairbanks, Alaska. We say hello to you. I understand you're having heat waves. It's only 20 degrees. Second down at about four from the 44 of LSU. First man through is Nagel. And he's very close to the first down. Warren Capone, the middle linebacker, who this evening is operating with neither Bo Harris nor Gary Champagne, who are usually flanking, in there. They are both hurt. Third and very short yardage. Jimmy Scott comes in with the play. Delightful evening in Miami, Florida. Temperature in the 70s. Been a beautiful week. This is Capaletti. He's got the first down and much more as he rambles to the 31 yard line. John Capaletti, the Heisman Trophy winner. And I imagine Capaletti went back to the huddle and took Mark Markovich, that left guard, and really thanked him on that one. A super block on Frank Racine. A safety coming up. Take a look at him. 54, Markovich pulling, leading. He'll try, he'll get Racine 17 right there. A real crunching block. Playing with a broken toe, Mark Markovich is. First down. LSU wants some insurance. Schumann back, running out of time and out of space. And thrown from the 31 back across the 40 to the 43 yard line. Ron Daly, number 93, led the way. That will make it second down and better than 20 yards. Our cameraman really did a super job in getting that Markovich trap block. You don't get that clear shot at a great block that often. As we watch that last play again, Tom Schumann just trapped, no chance. Heyman goes out to the left, top of your screen. 
Scott to the right. Second down, that is Nagel, and look at that play. Wow, Warren Capone, the linebacker from Baton Rouge. Warren is one of those fellows that says, you know, when you grow up in Louisiana, people don't know what it means to want to go to and desire to go to LSU. He grew up in the hometown where LSU is located. I thought you were going to say, you don't know what it means to be a new <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, class wins out. Warren Capone, leading tackler on the team again, coming through with a solo tackle. Third down and 25. And it's Nagel in motion. Schumann almost bound a pass, throws it to Chuck Hurd, and Hurd's down at the 45-yard line. Oh, well, now it's fourth down, a long yardage. They rule that as a trap catch. Back goes down. Cassidy forced this play. So they'll take that reception away from him as you watch it again. And there's a little bounce there. Short Short a few of those in your time? It's short set. Never. Always that. <laughs> Fourth down. Ryan Marcella back to kick it away to Dow. Rush is not on. I kick their catch goal four, and they're all around him, and he takes it at the 12-yard line. Well, as you, down by touchdown, has the football at their own 12-yard line. 7.09 to go, third quarter, Penn State 16, LSU 9. Don Capaletti, number 22, has been held to less than 40 yards so far, 36. Billy Broussard, number 9, has now gone in to play quarterback again. Remember, he is the stronger runner of the two and tends to run more. Quarterback for LSU. Hands off this time to Zerang. The fullback in Zerang didn't get too much, did he? Randy Crowder's down the bottom there again, along with Greg Murphy. And Ed O'Neill, second down and seven to go. Been watching Ed O'Neill. He has really moved great. I'm sure the pro scouts are dying to get their hands on him. 6'3", 230, senior from Warren, Pennsylvania. He calls the defensive signals for Penn State. Romaine and Ben Jones come wide to the left. Broussard pitches to Brad Davis. Davis streaks down the sidelines. Does not have the first down. He's got to get out to the 22-yard line. They'll mark that at the 19 where it's third down. I see a flag on the field. I don't know that's official flag are part of the halftime ceremonies left over there, but we'll see. The flag is right at the 15-yard line. You can see it. Billy Broussard is talking. Our referee will tell us that Penn State is offside. James Hartley will step off the five yards. Still does not give them the first down, but of course gives them another down. And so instead of third and short yardage, they have second and even shorter yardage. 6.25 to go. Joe Paterno looking on. They said about Joe when he was a quarterback at Brown, he couldn't run, he couldn't throw, but he sure could win. Smart, smart, funny, nice man. Brad Davis. Davis is having some kind of night. He's talking about Pro Scouts looking at Ed O'Neill. Pro Scouts looking at John Capaletti. Davis has got another year to go, but they're watching. 5'10", 205. Very rugged runner. That's the first down. They went the ball up past the 22. Brad Davis has deceptive speed. Uh, he doesn't look like he's going fast, but he's moving pretty good. He has rushed for 65 yards and caught four passes for 23 more. Trying to get him out of a hole. Here comes Davis with a nice hole in front of him, and he winches up another five or six yards across the 25, out between the 27 and 28. Joe Jackson, number 88, Mike Hartenstein, number 79, made the stop. 5.35 to go. Penn State Nipsey Lions. They are 11 and 0 on the season. And a touchdown favorite in this game, and leading by touchdown at this moment. Fans. Second down, six. Our eye left. First man through. Zerang breaks one tackle, but they get him as he gets out to the 30-yard line. Looks like he broke the tackle of Hartenstein, and Chris Devlin had to come up to make the tackle. 
trying to elude Tom Hall, who was lined up in there in the middle. Hall, the senior from Uniontown, Pennsylvania, the linebacker. LSU is at third and yardage to go on 10 different occasions, and have gotten the first down only three times. Third down and two. Sharp's not supposed to throw, doesn't want to throw it, and doesn't get the first down. Looking at Brad Boyd, but Hartenstein and Greg Murphy were looking at him. That made the stop. Rusty Jackson comes on. It's going to be fourth down and about a yard to go. A little bit too early in the game to gamble deep down to this territory. This ball game is still on the field. We've got nearly 20 minutes of play left. Heyman is the single safety as Jackson sets up. Driving ball away. Heyman is not calling for a fair catch. He's in the middle of a lot of folks, and down he goes. Wrestled down for the second time today by Greg Bienvenu. And we've got 3.56 to go, and it's 60 to 9. 10. Charlie Mark, Charlie McClendon of LSU facing the sidelines. First down for Penn State on their own 38. Schumann. Back to throw for Hurd again, and this time he does not make the impossible catch. If you were not with us in the first half, he made a, a catch you wouldn't believe. A 72-yard touchdown pass play. This time he couldn't do it. Dale Cangelosi, who was victimized the first time, stayed right with him this time. LSU has seven more first downs at Penn State, but they have seven fewer points. Jimmy Scott trots out wide to the right. Schumann is three for 11 for 88 yards and one touchdown. Take the Capaletti throwing all the way. Now he throws it out to Capaletti. Capaletti across the 40. There he goes across the 50. Makes a good move down the sideline and goes down inside the 25-yard line. John Capaletti finally tore one loose. The player of the year in everybody's book. Mike Williams and Thielen Smith finally did it. Someone asked why Capaletti. Capaletti was the defensive back. He said, well, we had Franco Harris and Lydell Mitchell, but now they're gone, and this is what he could do. They got some great help up front. Thielen Smith, the linebacker, getting knocked off. There's 49. Smith getting back up. Angelosi also knocked down. 40-yard game. From the 27th. Capaletti again. Oh, they're waiting for it. Hello, John. Knock him back to the 29-yard line. Dylan Smith leading the way. <laughs> well, John, if they didn't know you're a Heisman Trophy winner on that play, they knew one on the play before. <laughs> From the 24-yard. This, this football game tonight, this telecast, I think Kyle has had a little bit more than what you and I expected or anybody expected. It isn't your basic halftime. <laughs> Second down and 12. That is Capaletti and Thylan Smith picks him up as he gets down near the 25-yard line. 2.40 to go. We're in the third quarter, 16 to 9, Penn State. As John says, it's no piece of cake. <laughs> a lot of responsibility, a lot of pressure on him, I'm sure. As we mentioned, he'll be, I'm sure, the target of a lot of pro scout eyes. He has gained now 39 yards in 18 carries. Third down, he's going to get another shot at it, and they're going to get another shot at him, and it's fourth down. Bordelon, 99, leading the way. He was at the bottom of the pile. Steve Cassidy came over, and Warren Capone came over. But it's fourth down. That'll set up about a 27, 28-yard field goal. Well, you can add another 10 to that, being in the college ranks. That's correct, I forgot. And it's going to be Chris Barr with Jerem to hold. This will be 38 yards. Important for both teams. The 38-yarder is up and is no good. Barr misses from 38 yards out. And LSU takes over. The world's fastest team sport, National Hockey League action, returns to NBC this Friday night and again on Sunday afternoon. And remember, during the season, 15 regular season games, 
We will start Friday with the Boston New York game. Then on Sunday you'll see Minnesota against Detroit. You'll also see the Stanley Cup hockey playoffs. That's the National Hockey League on NBC starting this weekend. NBC Sports number one in live coverage of major sporting events all year round. Miley as you can see is back in. He is the quarterback. At that time they were not in the eye. Miley throws off the hands of the intended receiver. Robisky. Oh, now it is second down and ten. LSU has had the ball for 51 snaps from center. Penn State 44. LSU trails 16 and nine. You saw Miley talking to his receivers as they came back toward the huddle. I think he really had intended to throw that to Brad and was in fact throwing it to Brad Boyd, who had cut out deep. And he was just reminding him, don't get in the same passing area. Robisky is in the tailback. Bakier is in the wide receiver. Here's Robisky. They like him. He's the freshman. Look at him cut outside. He's across the 30. First down, Terry Robisky. But Charlie McLennan said, we've said before that he makes things happen. He said, but I've got to figure out where to spot him because he is a freshman. And a beautiful block by Richard Romaine, 26. Perhaps we'll be able to see it coming through that line right at the screen, right there, number 26. Wrapping up number 66, Chris Devlin, the linebacker, springs him loose. We said, Robinski, good size, 6'2", 198, as we go back to live action. Miley pitches back. Bakier is going for three touchdowns in his career. Doesn't get it away, and down he goes. Joe Jackson on top of him. Bakier, wide receiver, threw a 73-yard touchdown pass against Ole Miss this year. And he is thrown for three touchdowns in his career at LSU, even though he's a wide receiver. And he was just buried that time by Joe Jackson out of Brimfield, Massachusetts. 35 seconds and counting in the third quarter. Second down and 12. That is Robisky in motion. Miley looking to throw. Has time, running out of time, and runs out of the pocket. Hey, he's nifty, but he's not that nifty. They've got him at the 35-yard line. Penn State secondary did an excellent job, and actually, Kyle, they only had two receivers downfield to which he could throw. Well, actually, uh, I saw a third, <laughs> and that was Terry Rabisky. He was really just wide open, but he was hidden over here right in front of his, his uh, sideline where his teammates are as the quarter comes to an end. All right, the end of three quarters of the 40th Orange Bowl game. Penn State 16, LSU 9. Jim Simpson with Kyle Rowe back at the Orange Bowl. The Trove, Pennsylvania. Home of Arnold Palmer, Mrs. Joe Paterno, that's Sue Paterno, and many others. Third down and nine for LSU. They trail by a touchdown. Miley. He's in trouble again. Trouble again. And they'll have to kick it away. It's fourth down and nine. Through the third quarter, Penn State had gained 171 yards. LSU, 204. LSU had outrushed Penn State. Are you ready? 168 to 43. Penn State had outpassed LSU 128 to 36, but 72 of those were on one play. Jackson to kick it away to Bland and Heyman. Heyman, the leading punt returner in the nation last year. Ball is high, short, fair catch, and take it at the 31 yard line. Where it will be first down 10. They just about removed Mike Miley's jersey from him. We'll be watching the sideline if he comes back out to see if he, they have another number five on hand. If not, they might expect to see Miley in a different uniform number when he regains possession of the ball for LSU. From the 30, Hurd goes wide to the right. Heyman comes to the left. Capaletti and Nagel are your setbacks as Schumann calls the six. Make the Capaletti. Schumann with the ball over the middle of Heyman. Hugs, but he's got the first down. Beautiful play. Grant Dennis made the stop, but at the 49 yard line. Heyman will be picking his way across the middle, coming in from your right. Grant Dennis, the junior safety man, meeting him head on. A tough catch again to make when you see that man in your vision. Oh. Mike Miley, as you said, tore, had his jersey torn off, so he get a new one. First down, this is Capaletti coming this way, and he slips and falls. 13.50 to go. 
Well, this is the 25th anniversary of one of our NBC stations down in Houston, Texas. That is KPRC. Colonel Jack Harris is the general manager of KPRC. We send our best to them, and we also send publicly our condolences not only to KPRC, but to the family of Bill Ennis, our NBC announcer, who died in the month of December. We all miss him very much. Second down and 10. Schumann with the ball on his hip. Throws. Well, I tell you, the defensive back, Cook, made that play, intended for Hurd and Cook from Rain, Louisiana, gave Chuck Hurd of New York City quite a shot. Schumann fired that thing like a baseball. He really has control of that ball. As you said, a great defensive play by David Cook. Third down, 10. 13 17 to go. Penn State is at. 13 previous tries to make a first down on third. That's converted on five only. Schumann's going to throw if he can get it away, and he's being pursued, and there's that Dewey. Dewey is the one that set it up, and Machado is the one that knocked him down. But it was Adam Dewey that came in, and Vince Machado that knocked him down, and that is a loss from the 49 back to the 25. Just as we were commenting that Schumann had such good control over that ball, LSU countered with this move, 77. Adam Dewey chasing him, the freshman from Reserve, Louisiana, finished up by Binks Machota. Schumann not too happy with that. You can't blame him. Dow is deep. Marcella is in to do the kicking. High, not too long. Fair catch. Dow at the 36-yard line where LSU trailing by seven. Has the football back again after that 39-yard punt. 12 26 left. Penn State leads LSU. Miley, the quarterback, as is New Jersey, sends out Al Coffey wide to the left. Brad Boyd sets up on the left side. Brad Davis. Up yardage out to the 39-yard line. Call out a pickup of three. Second down and seven. Greg Murphy falling back into the flow of the action. Good tackle by the junior from Brooklyn. Coaches along the sidelines there with their little portable blackboard. There's the man signaling the offensive plays in the dark sweater there on the sideline, sending the plays into Mike Miley. That's Davis in motion. Miley looking to get it to him. Whoops, it's hit up in the air and falls down. Fine play by Joe Jackson. Jackson is the one that knocked it up in the air. Jackson is almost the one that caught it. Third down and seven to go. There's Joe Jackson, number 88. Again, just loaded with, uh, I would say, undergraduate players uh, in a sense of not being a senior. Junior from Renfield, Massachusetts. In fact, there's only one senior on that front four. That's Randy Crowder. They'll have all the other players back. Coffee checking with Hodgins, who's out there with him on the left side. Crowder almost jumped offside. Miley with time will cross the middle, and it is intercepted by Crowder. Crowder's at the 42-yard line, and Penn State has got yet another turnover. Randy Crowder is a senior and has never intercepted a pass for Penn State before right now. That's his first in his last game for the Nittany Lions. And uh, you need a little help when that happens. 79, Mike Hartenstein. Making him get that ball off probably a little sooner than he wanted. First down from the 42. Schumann, will he go for the bomb? He's going out. Intended for Dan Natale out there. Frank Racine was with him. It's incomplete. Natale is not as heavy as Ted Kowalik. He's 6'3 at 215, but they still insist that he could be another Ted Kowalik, one of the great tight ends in Penn State history. There are the turnovers. LSU 3, Penn State 1. Chuck Hurd comes out wide to the left. Heyman, who has lost his jerseys at the top of the screen, or lost half of it. Second down. Schumann going for Heyman. No good. Back there defending is David Cook. Well, I tell you what, 
They don't like the way Cook was with Heyman, but David Cook has to have some kind of speed to be able to stay with David Heyman. Well, they were stride for stride. And again, uh, those are, are good, are judgment type of calls, whether you're interfering or going for the ball. You'll watch David Cook, number six. Looked like he had his eye on the ball all the way. Now after the interception by Crowder, suddenly Penn State finds itself at third down 10. David Bland has come in. Jimmy Scott is the other wide receiver. And after the long run is out. Well, it's Capaletti trying for the first down, and he's not going to get it. Capaletti is tripped up. Steve Lollicans from Anglinton, Texas, made the stop. Number 59, and so now it is fourth down. Chris Barr, I believe, has come in. And remember, he is the All-America soccer player, and he can boot him from quite a distance. But this is going to be from quite a distance. Jerem will hold. Let's see where he sets up. At the 43, let's call it. So this would be an attempt of 53 yards. Barr's kick is up. And it is going to be short. So LSU takes over at the 20. We've still got 10.44 to go in a ball game that is still in doubt. And Penn State still leads it by the score of 16 to 9 as Bo Harris looks on. From the Orange Bowl of Miami, Jim Simpson with Kyle Road. It's about 10.41 Eastern time. That 10.44 you see there is the time remaining in this ball game. That's playing time, and the game is still in doubt. Robisky is again the tailback, an exciting freshman. And Robisky's got the football, and not much yard. The United States stacks him up pretty good. Led by Ed O'Neill and that man again, Sugar Bear, Randy Crowder. Arch Crowder, the senior from Pearl, Pennsylvania. Getting in there, a little help, of course, from number 49, Tom Hall. Really plays a good linebacker spot. Fills in there, hard nose, meets those plays. Romaine and Jones go wide left. Miley looks on on second down nine. Miley pitches out. That is Robisky, who's out across the 25 and bumped out of bounds hard by Tom Hall, number 49, as he gets to the 26-yard line. It'll be third down and four. 16 to nine is our score, and we'll repeat one more time. In the Cotton Bowl today, Nebraska 19, Texas 3. In the Rose Bowl today, Ohio State 42, Southern California 21. Robisky has carried eight times for 39 yards. Averaging nearly five yards a carry. Third down four. Miley still has the football. Miley's got the first down out to the 34-yard line. Mike Miley of Metairie, Louisiana, picks up the first down. Kyle commented before, take a look up and down the roster, offense and defense. LSU is a young, young team. Watch your right guard, Tyler LaFosse, 64, going through. 68's his man, Doug Allen, the linebacker. Romaine well, comes wide to the right. Addy is the fullback in there now. Finally passes to Romaine. First down out at the 50-yard line. They'll mark it at the 49 as Buddy Ellis made the tackle. 9.40 to go. Remember, it's 16 to 9, but LSU had the ball first down on the two-yard line as the half ended, and they could not score. Time ran out. Hodgins yes. comes in, and Romaine goes out. Again, that pass play coming off that same type of running action that you've seen earlier. Opens up beautifully. LSU has 16 first down now. Penn State, 8. Miley hands to Robisky. Oh, can he make things happen? Inside the 35 goes Terry Robisky of Lucy, Louisiana, with Tyler LaFosse leading the way. And again, as Charlie McClendon says about this freshman, and he is really exciting. He's a big play man, will be for a few more years to come. Runs with great authority and uh, a little uh, just enough abandoned. Ball is on the 34-yard line. Ben Jones wide to the left. Robisky gets the call again, and he 
Weathers there somehow from the 34 to the 31. Ed O'Neill jamming up that interference at the line of scrimmage. Richard Brooks has been relieved by Phil Moses. Brooks is getting a blow. It's rather warm here. Obiski has now carried 10 times for 58 yards. It is second down and eight to go. Up to 32. Miley looked like he wanted the quarterback draw, and it was plugged up, so he ran a little bit to his right and got across the 30 down to the 28. That'll be third down and about four to go. Buck continues to run, 8.15 to go in this 16 to 9 ball game. Davis is coming in. Obiski is coming out. Ostelet comes in, and Clay Kane comes out. Kane has started at left guard because Les Heald is not healed as the part of the and cannot play. Third down four, and there's Brad Davis, and he does not get it. And now, Mike Miley looks over to Charlie McClendon. Time showing, and the clock is running, 7.40. Do you try for it now? I think they're going to. As we watch Davis trying on that last play again, getting stacked up going off that right tackle spot. 82-49, Tom Hall again. Down to the bottom of that pile. Now what does Miley do? Does he use the option? Or does he have to get on a straight handoff, or does he throw? Third, fourth down, and about three. The fake, the pitch for Brad Davis. He's being tackled back there by Doug Allen. The outside right linebacker made a play, quite a play, at the 32-yard line, and Penn State takes over. The gamble failed. Allen played that linebacking spot just perfectly. It's a gamble also on the part of Charlie McClendon, a compliment to his defensive unit. All right, 7.07 to go. Penn State leads by seven points. Look at Here's the fourth down play again that LSU attempted. Penn State stopped. Doug Allen, number 68, the right side linebacker, on the pitch to Brad Davis, comes up, makes a saving tackle. Penn State's ball, first and 10 on their own 30. Schumann goes to John Kaplan, who goes only for maybe a yard. Penn State is known as one of the crushing ground attack teams. Tonight against LSU, they have been going to the air. They have not gained nearly as much yardage on the ground as has LSU. Tom Rafferty, a sophomore from Fayetteville, New York, has been playing much of the second half at left tackle over Phil Laporta of Valley Stream, New York. Kaplan has gained 45 yards on 22 carries. Second down, 10. Kaplan again. And again, they're waiting for him, and he picks up a couple of yards out near the 25. Angelosi, 39, led the tacklers. 6.24 to go and counting. And a big third down play now. LSU needs the football. Penn State needs to hang on to it. Steve Whitfield comes on to play defensive end. The shoulder comes out. Third down and eight. About six minutes to go. Penn State sends two wide receivers to the left. He bumps into Kaplan and he lost the football. Schumann jumps on it, but he bumped into John Capaletti and lost the football and any chance of picking up the first down. Rock Rayford was forcing everything. A flag down. We'll see what it's for. They're talking to LSU. But the LSU team has come on the field. Well, motion has been charged against Penn State which they, of course, refuse. Dow goes deep. Masella goes back to punt, standing on his own 15-yard line. 5.51 to go. 16 to 9, Penn State. LSU will get the football. Masella drives this punt. Chance for a return by Dow, but I believe his knee hit. Hold it, Robert Dow. Your knee hit at the 31-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for LSU. They've got 5.37 to go. Penn State leads 16 to 9. The Penn State third down play again that forced them to punt the ball away to LSU. 
the mix up in the backfield as you see Schumann bumping into Capaletti the ball down. Number 61, Rock Rayford, defensive tackle in, but recovered by Schumann. However, fourth down, they had to put it away to LSU. LSU's ball first and ten. Miley on the sidelines, Broussard is the quarterback, and Laura Hinton is the new tailback, number 24. Broussard seldom throws, but he's going for Romaine and a battle for it. And it is incomplete with Buddy Ellis back there to battle with it. So it'll be second down and 10 with 5.31 to go. Broussard is not known to be the kind of passer that Miley is. Miley is the better passer, but Billy Broussard tried to get that one away. We're talking about being hurt in Alaska tonight, Kyle, and said they're having a heat wave. It was 20 degrees of last report. Someone has wired us from St. Cloud, Minnesota, saying it's 26 below <laughs> up there. May I tell you it's about 72 above down here? Brad Davis has come back in. Hinton comes out of tailback. A fake to Davis. They fling it out to Davis. Davis is in deep trouble. Lost on the play. The boss who was over there could not hold out Crowder and Hartenstein. They didn't go for the passer. They went for Brad Davis. That's going to be third down and about 14. Time running out. Yeah, those screen plays like that, really, you have to do a great job of acting. And look like Davis came out of there a little too soon. Hartenstein and Crowder both saw him, both read it as quickly as he got out there. Al Coffey has just dashed into the lineup to whisper something to Broussard. Al Coffey trots out as a wide receiver, far to the left, along with Fakier. Davis sets out there. Broussard rolls that way and is in trouble, and Hartenstein gets it, and now it looks like he tried to throw it away. The flag is not down yet. They may say he was already down when he tried to throw it away. Hodgins was downfield. It's fourth down. Rusty Jackson has to come on. And now time becomes very important for Penn State and LSU. Penn State leads, and the clock is ticking away with 4.20 to go. Jackson in to do the punting. Gary Heyman, the nation's leading punt returner, is deep. That's the bossy right there in the picture. That's guard. Low pass. Jackson gets it away. Down goes the kicker, but no fly. Heyman is the nation's leading punt returner. He picks it up. Run out of bounds. Stops the clock at the 41-yard line. LSU scored first in this game on a 59-yard drive with Rodgers going over. Thereafter, Penn State went ahead and scored all 16 of its points. The fourth, there was a... Safety against Priscilla. Well, the Dean Martin Open, you can see what's coming up. 19th and 20th on NBC. On the 20th, we not only have the Dean Martin, but also the Pro Bowl game. That is Tom Donchez, number 31. Make that number 32, but it's still Tom. Warren Capone, 55. At the top of the screen, coming in to meet Dodgers. Single, another solo tackle as they add on to his great record. Second down, LSU's got to stop them. Penn State's got to hang on to the football. 3.20 left. Capoletti. Oh, he's got some room out here. And gets across the 45-yard line. It'll be third down and short yardage. He busts it out to the 48-yard line. Mike Williams ran him out of bounds. Number 29. So it'll be third down and three. And you know, Capaletti, so much like Brad Davis in the same sense that they have the deceptive speed. They they don't look like the real fly type of boys because they also run with such great power. When Capaletti went out of bounds, that stopped the clock with 3.12 to go. Jimmy Scott goes wide to the right. Capaletti with 54 yards and 24 carries. Big play right here. Third down. Schumann going, throwing, and is it good? It is good. Scott makes the catch at the 42-yard line. And that is a big play for the Nifty Lions. Schumann's coming out, getting good protection as he comes out. Good block by his fullback, Dodson. There you can see it yourself, official, right on the spot where you can see it. Good vantage point. 
Less than three minutes. Penn State favored by a touchdown, leads by a touchdown. Schumann pitches back to Capaletti. He's in a mass of people. Vaughn Daly, 93, was really the first man to hit him. After a gain of about a yard, it'll be second down and nine. He picked up the yard to the 41. Well, LSU came in here with two losses. Alabama and Tulane in their last two starts. Penn State came in here with 11 consecutive wins. LSU has dominated the statistics with Penn State leads 16 to 9. Down 9. There goes Donka. Big pullback rambles to the 32-yard line. And again, we come up with one of those third down situations. Third down and about five to go. Cassidy made the stop of Donka. Lives in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. As you can see, is an excellent student. Joe Paterno along the sidelines. He, he and his Penn State Nittany Lions and LSU have given us some great orange bowls. Penn State, Kansas, Penn State, Missouri, LSU, Nebraska, now Penn State, State and LSU against each other. Third and five, Capaletti, Dewey can't hold on to him, but he's run out of bounds for the loss. And it's fourth down with 1.29 to go. And now with a score 16 to 9, you can anticipate the last minute and 28 or 9 seconds of this game. Our thanks to Ernie Seiler, Executive Vice President of the Orange Bowl, and his assistants Dan McNamara and Hal Fleming. Wasn't that some halftime show? Wasn't that a great pregame show? Also, of course, Dr. Woody Mates Fields, the President of the Orange Bowl, and two old friends of ours down here, Orange Bowl Committee men, former President Ben Benjamin and Jack Bowl. Marcella to kick it away. This punt will tie the Orange Bowl record of 15 punts in a game. Rice against Tennessee in 1947. Not a very long punt. You know what he wanted to do. He didn't want to punt it out of the end zone. He'd like to have gotten it out of bounds. 106 to go. Miley will be the quarterback. And the sellout crowd here at the Orange Bowl knows now that in 106, LSU can lose tie or win it. Penn State can lose, tie, or win it. From the 23-yard line, they have 77 yards to go and a little bit more than a minute. Brad Davis, Miley, back to throw, intended for Hodgins and overthrows everybody. That will stop the clock. With 1.02 to go. With Penn State in their drop back or blanket or prevent type of defense now. Looks like Miley's gonna almost have to catch one of his receivers cutting across the field on an angle underneath the deep end. Let him grab the ball and run with it. I don't believe they're gonna be able to get behind Scott Mitchell, who is patrolling the deep center field position more or less. Way back, they'll have to complete it underneath him. Romain to the right, Coffee to the left. Miley, running, throwing, has his man. What a move put on there by Brad Boyd, who slips out of bounds with 51 seconds to go. Well, at least he stops the clock as he tried to turn off the field and slipped out of bounds. 16 to 9, 51 seconds left. As I mentioned, as we look at that defensive coverage again, they're dropping way back. 14 Mitchell, the deep center fielder. Brad Boyd coming across 89. A pretty good move there. And here is the lose one tackle. He slips as he's trying to cut up field inside, inbound. That's Brad Davis in motion. Up oh, all the left. Doug Booty, the left tackle, stood up. All is wrong. Devlin makes the stop out there. Of Brad Davis, well, they may take the play, but Booty was moving. Let's watch. Fran Fisher is spotted for Penn State. Don Kennard for LSU tonight. Henry Goldberg has been our statistician. Randy Crowder gets the word from referee what happened. You can see Booty moving right there on the right-hand side of your picture. Right at the top of your screen, right-hand side. Hey, he's moving before the ball goes. Jim O'Gorman and Ewan McDermott have been our stage managers, and they are going to refuse the penalty. 45 seconds to go. Second down and nine. 
That was uh, some orange bowl and some orange bowl game. Miley has time, goes for Boyd and overthrows him. At the 20 yard line, Brad Boyd. Back there with him was Jim Bradley. Stop with the clock with 33 seconds to go. And third down and nine coming up. And you got that three deep to beat back there. Bradley, Scott Mitchell, Buddy Ellis. As they come back to the huddle, let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the delighted NBC Television Network. Well, 33 seconds. Third down and nine. Miley swings it out to Davis, can't hold on to it. And now we come to fourth down. We come to the moment. After the spring training, the entire season of 11 games, the workout for the Orange Bowl, Nittany Lions holding on to that seven-point lead. They have been outgained tonight, but they have taken advantage. They have scored, and they've controlled a very tenacious LSU team. Time out now as Mike Miley comes over to talk with Charlie McClendon. And I think even if Brad Davis had caught that ball, it wouldn't have been for much of a gain, uh, even, I don't know, even if they would have made a first down on it. 29 seconds to go, it is fourth down. Of course, if they don't make this fourth down play, it won't matter how many timeouts they have remaining, but uh, they do have two remaining. Well, Kyle, I'll not forget this game once it's over, or will I forget the halftime that we had on this game, and this game is not over yet. We have 29 seconds to go, and strange things, exciting things have happened at the Orange Bowl. Steve Rogers has come in. He is the tailback, number 22. Romain is to the right. Miley is back on fourth down. Miley throws and misses his man at the 41-yard line. Penn State has the ball, and Penn State has the orange bowl. Ball was intended for Romain at the sideline. Incomplete. 26 seconds to go at the 1974 orange bowl, barring an unusual miscue, belongs to the Nittany Lions of Penn State. LSU scored first. But beyond that, they've been able to only add a safety on a bad snap. They have not scored since. LSU has run up 278 total yards. Penn State 186. Schumann is not going to add to the total too much. He may be able to track because now it's 20 seconds. That clock has not stopped. And apparently will not stop. Perhaps, Kyle, they have run out of time. After all, the Penn State Nittany Lions fans will count it down. That's it. Joe Paterno in the middle of your picture there coming over to find Charlie McLennan. They are the best of friends. They are two of the top coaches in the land. Penn State heavily favored. Did win the ball game. LSU did do a good job of taking many of Penn State's attributes away from them but the game went just as they expected final score Penn State 16 LSU 9 and Kyle it was something wasn't it? it really was and what a great show they not only the halftime obviously such a good one there but what a good show these two teams put on great players in it we wish them well wherever they go all right Kyle this is Jim Simpson with Kyle Rhodes saying happy new year everybody and goodbye from the Orange Bowl to Miami, Florida, where Penn State has defeated LSU 16 to 9. And remember, National Hockey League action returns to NBC Friday night and again on Sunday afternoon, 50 regular season games, beginning this Friday with Boston and New York, on Sunday, Minnesota against the Detroit Red Wings. Plus, of course, at the end of the season, the Stanley Cup Hockey Playoffs. That's the National Hockey League on NBC starting this weekend.